Hi there YouTube and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you the audit deployment process. And don't worry, we're going to start off with a brief PowerPoint here. Let me just first quickly explain what audit actually is. Audit is a feature in Windows where you can customize some of its settings, add third party applications, and make some personalization customizations like custom wallpaper and accent colors. Once you have done all of this, you can lock the computer, say, hand it off to a friend. And when they then turn the computer on, they're going to get the brand new computer experience. Like if they bought a computer in a store from Asus or Acer or Dell or HP or whatever. And when they get their account created, they are going to have all the software and the customizations that you did on the computer. This is the specific use case that we're going to focus on in this video. But I would like to point out though, that you could use this for deploying multiple computers. Because basically, once you've created the computer's audit, you can just create an image of a computer and then you can copy that image to an external hard drive and off to several other computers for use in maybe small clubs, small businesses or whatever. So I'm not going to be showing this specific step, but let me know in the comments if you would really like to know this and maybe I'll do a video about that in the future. Uh, there are going to be some limitations for this uh, audit process, and I'm just going to go through a few of them. I have used this mostly for deploying a small number of laptops. Um, so that's where I've mostly discovered these limitations. I may not have found them all. Uh, browser uh, settings is one that I found that is particularly annoying because when you change the browser settings and then do the audit deployment, these browsers think that they have been tampered with by malicious software, and so they will completely reset all the settings. I've tried this with Firefox as well, and none of them has worked for me so far. Maybe you'll find a browser with better luck. Uh, some settings in Windows will not uh, bite either. They will not stick with it once you do the audit deployment. Um, they change sometimes with the larger updates of Windows, um, so I can't exactly tell you all of them. Uh, Windows Store apps can also not be deployed this way. You can, of course, download third-party uh, software from any website and install on the computer, but you cannot get it from the Microsoft Store. Also, one thing to be aware of is, of course, the uh, Windows license. Uh, if you're using a computer with a pre-purchased license, like if you bought a computer in a store and then just want to get rid of all the bloatware and make a clean experience before you hand it off to someone, that computer is going to be delivered with a specific version of Windows, either Windows 10 Home or Pro. And you need to make sure that you use that exact license that the computer came with. Otherwise, you're going to have to deal with that. And if you choose to deploy to multiple computers, make sure that they are all running the same version of Windows. Otherwise, you're going to have a real problem on your hands. It's not going to be fun. Uh, however, let's get this video moving and just uh, wrap it up with what you need. You will need a USB thumb drive for Windows 10, and it's going to be, need to be a 16 gigabyte stick or larger. And you're going to need some files that I'm going to provide you. They are all going to be in the description below. And uh, with that, let's get to it. All right, first up, let's get Windows 10 downloaded. And you can just hop ahead in your browser and search for download Windows 10. I'm doing it in Edge here, but you can do this in Chrome and Firefox as well. Find the first search result, download Windows 10. It may be called Windows 10 ESO. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead and use the uh, official Microsoft Windows 10 media creation tool. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of a different method here because I want to show you that it's an option. And also because this is great if you want to prepare more than one USB thumb drive and if you create them with frequency. So go ahead and find the developer uh, mode in your browser. It, here it's under the three dots and under additional tools. And then go ahead up here and uh, enable the tablet or mobile version of the website. And then go ahead and reload the page. You'll now get the mobile version of, it, of the page. And here you can actually go ahead and choose uh, what version of Windows you want. And for some reason you can only choose the latest. So I don't know why they make this option, but whatever. Choose the language that you want to download. Hit confirm. And then you get both a 64-bit and 32-bit download link. We're going to hit 64-bit here, of course, and so should you. And if we just check, check the download menu, you can see that we're now downloading a ESO file directly. To deploy this ESO file or to use it, I use a little tool called Rufus. And you can just go ahead and search for that in your search engine. 
the official address is rufus.ie. And you can just go ahead here and download the portable version of it. I've already done that, so I'm just going to skip that step right here. Uh, while all that is downloading, we might as well go ahead and download all the other software that we need. We can see that we have a little time left here. I'm going to make a little advertisement here for Ninite.com. I want to. I'm not being sponsored them or anything, but if you haven't, uh, if you don't know about this site yet, it's about time that you do. Um, it offers all these various pieces of software, and all you go ahead and do is just checkbox the software that you want. We're going to go for some Chrome here and some Discord. We're going to make a gaming computer here or whatever. Well, no, we're not. Uh, VLC, Handbrake, all comes in handy. Some LibreOffice, you never know. Some 7-Zip, some FileZilla, and, you know, whatever. Let's check off some Spotify, maybe. There we go. You just scroll down the page, and then you hit Get Your Neonite. It's going to download a tiny little file of about 200 to 300 kilobytes. And basically what this is, is a recipe for Neonite's website. You open this file, it's going to download and install all the software without any additional settings checked. All it's going to do is install the software and create desktop shortcuts and start menu shortcuts. And you can keep the file around. So if you want to update all the software, you can just run the Neonite file once more and it's going to update all the software. For the demonstration of this video, I'm going to download a third-party app. I'm going to go ahead here and download LightShot. If you take a lot of screenshots, definitely check this app out. It is absolutely ingenious. At this point, go ahead and download the drivers for the computer you're going to be doing the audit on. I'm going to skip that step since I'm going to be using a virtual PC for this for the ease of recording this video. You're also going to need a couple of files that you can download in the link in the description. They're going to be in my Google Drive public folder. I'm just going to show you the files here so that you know I'm not trying to push anything onto you. I'm a good guy. This is an XML file that's going to tell the system to copy the profile. This is an XML file with no other customizations. You can go ahead and look, at, uh, look through it. All it's going to do is do a profile copy. A profile copy means that any of the customizations that you do will be copied onto every user who logs into the computer. The other command is the sysprep command, which we're going to use to seal the audit, if you will. This is the command that's going to close down the computer once you're done. And all that's going to do is it's going to call the XML file and the rest that it's going to do, I'm going to show you a little bit later when we use it. I've also added a little wallpaper here that we're going to deploy just for the demonstrations of this video. You can, of course, go ahead and download these things right now as well. And let's just check if everything is downloaded. Yep, Windows 10 is downloaded. And that means we can go ahead and get started with creating the USB thumb drive. I'm just gonna quickly show you this step. So I'm gonna load up Rufus here. I'm gonna double check that my USB drive here is loaded. And yep, it's the right one. It's the one that's empty. Go ahead and choose the ESA file. You're gonna click this little button here. Select your Windows 10 ESA file. And then maybe let's give it a little bit more uh, appropriate name here. So let's call it Win 10 uh, 21H1. And then we're just going to hit the start button and let it create. And yeah, of course, we want to format it. There we go. It's now going to prepare the USB thumb drive. And you can at this point just start copying the drivers to it or wait until this is done and then copy everything over to the USB thumb drive. It doesn't really matter. But uh, at this stage, we are uh, in this video anyway, ready to show the first part of the audit process. All right, so let's get the virtual PC up and running here. So if you've never installed Windows 10 before, actually, this is a good chance for you to see how at least the first part of it's done. Depending on your USB drive or whatever, the first boot process will take the time that it takes. Now I'm going to leave the language here uh, for English and set my keyboard for Danish so that I know where my keys are. Click install now and we'll just wait for Windows to check if there is a pre-existing license on the computer. It'll find that there is not since it is in a virtual PC. If you've bought a pre-built computer from either HP or Acer or, so, or, or whatever, it should find it automatically. Now I'm going to click that I don't have a product key and I'm going to choose Windows 10 Home here. But remember, Choose the version for which license you have either purchased or is going to use later. We're going to choose a custom install and we're going to create a new partition on the drive and we're going to hit OK and click Next. And now it's going to install Windows. 
uh, it's probably obvious that I have sped up the video here quite a bit. Uh, depending on the USB drive, this takes about 10, 15 minutes for the first time. So it's not really that bad. Now, if you've ever installed Windows 10 before, stop right now. Don't click any further. For us to proceed from here, you need to hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and then hit F3. You're now going to send the computer into a restart and when it starts back up, it's going to be in audit mode. This is when we can customize the computer and change the various settings that we would like. And here we go. You can see it locks us into the local admin account and it's just gonna take a little moment here to prepare the rest. And now that we are into Windows, we can just accept this network thing. And then this system preparation tool, uh, we're not really going to use it, but we are going to drag it to the side instead of closing it. Keeping it to the side right down here is going to prevent the computer for, from going into sleep mode. Leaving the computer to go into sleep mode while it is in audit mode means that you can actually not get back into the user account, which means you have to force restart the computer to get back into it. It could cause problems for Windows at a later point in time, so just leave it at the side. Don't risk causing any issues. And then the first step we should go through is to install the drivers for the computer that you're deploying Windows on. Uh, for a virtual PC here, that's pretty easy. I'm just gonna mount the guest image CD thing and run through the driver setup here. And that should be a pretty quick process. You can restart the computer or shut it down without any problems uh, when you're having this audit mode running, by the way, but you cannot leave the computer to go into sleep mode or power saving mode. That is gonna cause issues. So uh, just a little note while we're waiting here. All right, Windows has now restarted and drivers should be loaded. And we have a little bug with the virtual PC here. Um, but whatever, let's just change the resolution here so we can all see what we're doing. And as you can see here, I had a little bit of a problem with that, but uh, not to be discouraged, we'll continue. Now, I'll just go ahead and load the folder uh, with all my uh, utilities in it. Um, this is what you copy to your USB drive, so it's no different than that. And let's go check if that loaded correctly. Yep, there we go. Now in here, we can get started with the, the Neonite and get that running. And as you can see here, it is just a long list of the software that it installs and it's just gonna go through all of them without you having to do anything. So you can at this stage actually just minimize it and then you can work on something else in the meantime. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to start copying the files into the C drive that we're going to need for the audit deployment. I'm going in my system drive here and I'm going to create a folder called audit. You can call it something else if you want, but uh, there is a little something you need to be aware of if you do. Um, but I'll just show you that in a second. We'll just copy these two files first, my wallpaper and my uh, XML file for the deployment. Uh, now, this uh, audit command that I have prepared, note that it points to the C and audit location on the hard drive. So if you change the location of that XML file, you need to change that command when you run it. So just create an audit folder on the C drive, it'll be a little bit easier for you. And most people don't look there anyway. So let's go ahead and deal with some of these customizations. And a couple more problems and the virtual PC activated here, which I just did off screen. We can go ahead and set the wallpaper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and point to my audit folder and choose the file or choose the photo that I downloaded and maybe it'll load. If we click something maybe. Yep, yeah, there we go, we got it to load. Let's see if we can get the theme changed to a dark theme here just because we can. It, I don't really know why this problem is actually happening. I didn't have this problem yesterday when I did the prep for this video, but whatever, we got the dark mode selected and let's see if we can get uh, the orange accent color uh, set as well. All right, let's see if we can get that orange color to stick. Yeah, there we go. And let's see if we can set the title bars and the window borders as well, just so that the color is a little bit more visible. Yeah, there we go. A little troublesome, but we got there. Uh, the lock screen cannot be customized, so we might as well just head out of here. 
Um, some of the other settings in this settings panel can be changed, but not all of them will remain once you seal the audit or close the computer, if you will. Um, some of the system settings will remain. Um, the power settings I know will. I can just quickly show you these um, if we can get the settings panel to actually do it. Uh, these power savings uh, or power saving settings will stick uh, when you do the deployment afterwards or when you uh, seal the audit. So you can go ahead and change those. And let's just check the status of the Neonite um, VLC fail. So we'll just retry that one. It can happen every once in a while, but here we go. And we can just close down the knee night. Um, and you can, as you can see, it only created these uh, desktop shortcuts and that's about it. Uh, I also want to install LightShot here, but that's just to show that you can install executable uh, installers as well. And there we go. Close down the browser. Now, any third party app that you install can be customized and pretty much any setting in these third party applications are going to stick. You might find one that is a little troublesome, but I haven't found any yet. So I'm just going to open up LibreOffice and click away the toolbox tips dialog thing and the release notes. I'm going to maximize it and then close it down. And then we're going to go ahead and make some customizations to VLC or rather just click away this little box so people don't see that. There's no need for that. And we're going to do the same for FileZilla. There we go. And we're going to have one final thing that we want to do here. Uh, and that's 7-zip. And that's just because I know that application creates a little bit too much mesh for me in the right-click menus. Uh, let me just quickly show you here. You can see that it has a menu that's overbloated and it has this uh, other menu that I don't really know what it's for. So let's just clean up that mess. I don't know why it actually defaulted to Danish here, but for some reason it did. So I'm just going to click through and make sure that there is icons in the right-click menu so that they're easy to find. And then I'm just going to go and make my default setup here. Uh, just Okay, I'll explain. Uh, the, setup, the setup that I make means I can extract files immediately or I can extract them to a folder. I can just quickly uh, create an archive or I can just quickly create a zip archive. Uh, those are the settings that I prefer. I'll just click OK. And as you can see right now, when we, when we right click, we have an easy menu to go through. And the settings that I use the most anyway is easily accessible. You can, of course, customize it any way you want. Now, one more thing that we can do here, um, which I also encourage you to actually do, is go ahead to the Microsoft Store and run the store updates. It's correct that you, I did say that you cannot load any third party applications from the store. You cannot go ahead and install additional applications, but any of the accompanying Windows applications can actually be updated. And you might as well do this, especially if you're deploying this to multiple computers, because otherwise these computers are just gonna spend the first 24 hours dealing with updates and the end user, which are getting the computer are also going to do this. The same for Windows Update here, just go ahead and deal with the Windows updates. Even though you download an ESO file from Microsoft's website, not all updates are going to be in that ESO file. And for whatever reason, we just have a little bug with virtual PC again here or virtual box. There we go. Um, so just go ahead and deal with these updates. There we go. I can see at least one or two updates here that are going to cause a restart. So just deal with it. And whenever the person you give the computer to uh, starts the computer up, they don't have to deal with updates the first time they turn it on. And within the first 24 hours, they're going to get a prompt that the computer needs to restart because of security updates or whatever. So run these updates through. And there we go. The updates for Windows is now done downloading. And so is every update for the Microsoft Store. Um, you can see there were quite a few updates and for some reason it changed to Danish, but whatever. And Windows Update had one update that required a restart, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. And after this restart, I'm actually ready in my demonstration here to do the seal of the audit. So let me just quickly go through that audit command just to show you exactly what it is it does. The first part of the command calls a sysprep tool that's built into Windows. You can see right here, it's just calling something that's already in Windows. This little tool has a couple of additional things that we can get it to do. This first one is called generalize. What this does is that it removes 
or rather it decouples the drivers from the hardware elements in the computer. That means when the computer starts up again after the shutdown, it's going to have to reload every single driver for every piece of hardware inside the computer. This is a pretty good idea to do because not all drivers are going to work in audit mode. Uh, I have seen this on several computers, so this is a really good idea. And especially if you do, uh, choose to image the computer and copy it onto multiple computers, it needs to reset the hardware ID and it can only do that by generalizing the system. The next option is called OOBE or out of box experience. That's where you set the language, the create your user account, uh, set up your Wi-Fi, and choose what information Windows 10 is allowed to collect about you. So we're gonna make sure that OOBE is here so that, it, so that it does that. The next command is that we're going to shut down the computer. That means when we run the audit command, it's gonna turn the computer off when it's done. And the final command that we're gonna run is the XML file that copies the profile on the computer. That means any of the customizations that you did are going to be copied into every user account created on that computer. So that is what this command does. And we'll just go ahead and copy it here. And then we're going to open up a command prompt. And as you can see, my virtual computer here is still bugging me out. So we're gonna to have to use the shortcut for this. Hold down the Windows key or the one with the flag and hit R and then type CMD in the command prompt. You then get a command prompt, paste in the command and hit enter. And, oh, apparently you need to close this down. It didn't always used to be like that, but apparently they changed that. It's now going to go ahead and do some cleanup and generalize the system. Depending on the amount of drivers and whatever on the computer, this takes two to five minutes. So there we go. The computer has now shut down. If you wanted to image the computer, now would be the time where you would grab the image with some imaging software and copy it onto other computers. Or if you're just delivering a computer to a friend, now is the time you hand it over to your friend because you have actually done your part. So let me actually just show you now what it actually looks like. Uh, by the way, if you don't have a Microsoft account or don't want one, now is a really good time to disconnect your internet connection. So pull out the cable, uh, if it's a cable computer, and do not connect to Wi-Fi if asked. Otherwise, you will be forced to use or create a Microsoft account throughout this process. I'm also going to have to give you a little warning here. Uh, I had a little problem with Cortana. I'm sorry, I gotta share this with you. Hi there, I'm Cortana, and I'm here to help. A little sign, 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 sign. Yeah, that's not at all annoying. You, you, you. Okay. Let me just spare you and cut the audio on the on my end here. Sorry about that. And thank you, Windows, for that little gem. That was great. So if we just get Cortana out of the way, we can actually just proceed here. I've actually never set up a computer with Cortana before because we don't have Cortana in Denmark. But anyway. We set up our region and I'm just going to set it to United States here and then I'm going to pick a Danish keyboard layout. And as you can see, I had a little bit of problem picking a time with Cortana here where she would actually be silent so that I could actually do this in somewhat peace. Um, but anyway, we've picked the Danish language and we have skipped adding any additional keyboard layouts. We're going to continue. We don't have internet because we're Neanderthals. We're going to continue with limited setup and the computer is just going to go ahead and give a little quick restart. It's now going to prepare the OOBE for a not internet connected setup. And as you can see, our color is now starting to shine through briefly. There is a very brief license agreement here that we have to accept. And then we can actually create a user account. So let me just type in the name of my YouTube channel and someday I might actually learn to type on a keyboard. It's supposed to be a little bit cleaner, but whatever. Here's a pro tip. Do not create a password at this stage. Otherwise, you'll have to uh, create some reset questions that you can use for later. And then you can disable some of the privacy settings. This usually looks a little different. I actually don't know if this is just the new 21H1 version of Windows or if this is just because I'm inside a virtual PC. I'm going to uh, say not now to Cortana because I actually think I've had my fun with that. And here we go. We're just going to let the computer finalize the first startup. And there we go. 
we are now into Windows and you can see all the customizations that we did are now attached. And if we open some of the software, uh, let's say LibreOffice here, if I can actually click it, there we go. You can see that there is no toolbox or information bar or anything. It just starts up. The only thing that it didn't remember was that it was supposed to be maximized. Big deal. VLC also without any prompts. Uh, FileZilla, however, did not uh, actually save the settings. So maybe I should have gone through more to keep it away. I don't know, but sometimes that happens. And if we go ahead here, I want to show you if you create another account, these settings will actually be on every single account. Um, for whatever reason, virtual PC and settings is just not good friends. But we can add another family member to this computer. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create one without a Microsoft account. Uh, at this stage, by the way, I have reconnected the virtual PC to the internet, by the way. But anyway, we're just going to create a user here called family member. There we go. And of course, my problems is not quite done yet because could I find the sign out button here? Nope, that didn't work. So good old control alt delete had to help me out here. But anyway, we're going to log into the family member. There we go. And it's just going to go through a little bit of the OOBE experience here the first time. And then once it has completed, uh, the user or family member or whatever will just have to choose these uh, settings for information collection and hit accept. And there you go. The wallpaper is loaded. And if you open any of the applications installed, uh, all the settings that you changed will actually stick with it. So that's how you can do an audit deployment of a computer. This was a bit of a long video. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that was about as short as I could make it. But thank you for thick. Uh, Thank you for sticking with it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.